Welcome to Teaching Students by Design. I'm Ellen Hefty. Thank you for joining me as we discuss energy types and why knowing a student's type is a game changer for your classroom. As I mentioned in a previous episode, the goal of my program is to understand the energy needs of your students so they can reach their fullest potential. Each one of us has our own unique energetic blueprint called a body graph that is the hard wiring for how we interact in the world. Every person has a circle of energy called an aura around them. Its size varies, but as a general rule, if you spread your arms out side to side, that circle may be as far out as your fingertips or more. Your aura is different from everyone else. Have you ever had the experience where you felt someone before they even walked in the room? Or before the pandemic, when we all stood closer to each other, that you felt like somebody was in your personal space. You could feel their energy overlapping with yours. That's because we all have this energetic circle that surrounds us. Each person's aura is unique, but in quantum human design, we separate them into five different groups called energy types. Each type has its own unique role in the world and has a different way of working and relating with others. Knowing the characteristics of each type helps you understand your students better. The first energy type is called an initiator. It makes up about 9% of the population. Its role is to make an impact in the world. Their energy feels kind of forceful, powerful, really kind of intense. I think of their energy like a bulldozer clearing the land for something new. I like to make analogies with animals. When I think of an initiator, I think of an elephant. An elephant creates large holes in the ground that then fill with water, and it gives other animals access to water. Elephants, being powerful and forceful, make an impact in the world by just being who they are. The second type is called an alchemist. It makes up 37% of the population. Their role is to build the world, and their energy feels really warm and inviting, kind of like a warm hug. Those are the people that you're just like, oh, I just want to be around and they just feel so good. I think of a mother gorilla who carries her young everywhere she goes while working to care for her family. The third type is called a time bender. Time benders make up about 33% of the population. A time bender is a hybrid between an initiator and an alchemist. A time bender's role is to build the world just like an alchemist but they learn the fastest and most efficient way to build it. They are really good at multitasking. Their energy feels fast and hurried. They've left the room, but you still feel them in the room because their energy is moving constantly. I think of a mother cheetah when I think of a time bender. She can be fast when out hunting for food, but also lovingly tending to her cubs at the same time. The fourth type is called an orchestrator. An orchestrator makes up about 20% of the population. Orchestrators are here to guide others. So their energy is pretty focused and absorbing. It's almost like a spotlight on you and can be uncomfortable at times. They take in the person's energy so that they know how to guide them. I think of a giraffe when I think of an orchestrator, someone who's high up, can see the big picture, and uses that view to see ways to improve things. The final type is called a calibrator. Only makes up about 1% of the population, very rare. Their role is to mirror back to the world how we are doing. Their energy, kind of like a buffet, takes in a sampling of all the energies of those around them. I think of an owl who is wise and just watches the world around them and then reacts based on what they are observing. As you can tell from the percentages, if you're teaching all students all the same way, there's naturally going to be some that will be out of alignment with their energy needs. The traditional school model teaches us to teach the majority. And knowing just a student's energy type will help you understand their role in the world and how they work with others. In our next episode, we will discuss the strategy for each energy type and how strategy is the key to understanding how your students operate energetically in the world. 
Thank you for listening to Teaching Students by Design with me, Ellen Hefty. You can find out more at www.ellenhefty.com. My mission with the Teaching Students by Design program is to guide educators to transform how students are educated and help all parties reach their fullest potential, knowing that when each of us is being our unique and authentic self, the world is a more sustainable, compassionate, peaceful, and loving place.